Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm talking about Art of Books. Okay, art of books. As an artist, you need to fill your creative bank account. You've heard me talk about that before. And one of the best ways is to study art of books. Art of books is a genre of books that have been really popular, I'd say the last 10 years or so. I remember as a kid, they were, they were few and far in between. The only real art of books I remember as a kid were uh, the art of Star Wars. I had the art of Return of the Jedi. I gotta show it to you. All right, this is my original Art of Star Wars uh, book that my dad got me, and the thing is falling apart. I mean, the binding doesn't even work anymore. Uh, but I love this book, and this book taught me so much about how to draw. So that's why I say, if you don't have a collection of Art of books, you need to start. Now you might be asking, why Jake? Why do I need an Art of book when I've got Google Image Search, I've got Pinterest, I've got all these artist galleries like DeviantArt or ArtStation. Why do I need art of books? I'm gonna tell you why. Here's the case for having art of books. All right, number one, art of books have art in them that you can't find anywhere else. You can't find it online. You can't find it on artist blogs. There's exclusive art that is just for the art of books. And it's, sometimes it's the best stuff. So flip through an art of book, you're gonna see artwork that you're not gonna find anywhere online. Sometimes the artists uh, do post art from the project on their websites, on their blogs, on Tumblr, whatever. Um, and so yeah, you can go around and save artwork, click it around, trying to find all the artwork that all the artists who've worked on the project have saved, but that's a pain to be behind. And it's so much nicer to have all those images in one place. Now the argument could be said that you could just save them all on your hard drive. I do that, I have folders on my hard drive dedicated to specific artists, uh, dedicated to specific projects. But do you know what I found? I found that I don't actually go back and look through those very often because I forget they're on my hard drive, they're buried in there. However, my art of books are right there on my bookshelf back here and I might be walking past and see a book that I haven't looked at in a long time, grab it, flip through it. There's nothing like having that physical artifact that represents the collective wisdom of everything that went into that project. And that's something that's, I think, truly unique and something that should be embraced. The other case for Art of Books is it collects in one place the bar that you have to reach as an artist if you want to be competitive in, in any particular industry. So if you want to be an artist in video games or animation or film, these books show you that bar they show you the level that you need to be working at in order to be hired by these studios. It gives you something to work towards. These art of books are like textbooks on how to make an animated film or a video game or, or a movie. They show you the production schedule. They show you, how, you know, how things go from script to final image on the screen. They show you the design process, all the iterations that went into creating a specific character or a specific environment. And many of these art, art books also show like story evolution, where the story was and where it ended up. Here's my list of five qualities of a great art of book. If an art of book doesn't meet these minimum standards, I usually don't buy it. I don't even give it a second thought. Quality number one is an art of book needs to have a lot of art. It seems obvious, but some art of books kind of skimp on that. And sometimes there's more screen grabs of the actual film that you ended up watching and less art. Good art, art of books won't have any screen grabs from the film. If they do, it, they're small and it's to illustrate a point of you know the development from the initial stages to what ended up on the screen. Nothing upsets me more than when I'm flipping through an art of book and all it is is, you know, here's a screenshot from the film. Here's another screenshot from the film. If I want to see that stuff, I'll watch the film. The reason I'm getting an art of book is so I can see the art that went into the book. So if you see an art of book with screenshots in it, put it down, um, don't touch it, don't even think about it. Quality number two, the orientation of the book should match the orientation of the media that the book's documenting. So if it's documenting a film or an animated movie, Animated films and animated movies are horizontal, so the book should match the artwork that is being created for that film, which is typically horizontal. Now I have a few good art of books that are vertical, but it's because a lot of the artwork that was made for the film was vertical in design. But for the most part, and, and most art of books are following this, 
They've kind of gotten into a nice groove, a way they do things now. These publishers, most art of books are, you know, this this horizontal, this horizontal format. Okay, the third quality of a good art of book is it should be a comprehensive look at what went into the making of the project. It doesn't leave things untouched. One thing that frustrates me is you're going through an art of book and there's things in the film that you saw or in the game that you played and there's nothing in the art of book that documents that. You know, if you see a really cool spaceship in this, in this movie and there's really no designs for that spaceship, that is so frustrating. Because a good art of book will show all of the different pieces that, that were put together to make that film. The fourth quality of a good art of book is all the images are properly credited. Nothing upsets me more than looking at cool artwork in an art of book wanting to know who did it so I can see more of their artwork and not being able to find out who did it because they weren't credited. Um, another pet peeve is some art of books will put all the credits in the back of the book instead of right under the image. No, a good art of book will have the image and right underneath it, it'll say this, you know, by so and so. And lastly, the fifth quality of a good art of book is it's gonna have a good documentation of all the thinking and development that went into the creation of the film. It's gonna have interviews, it's gonna have quotes, uh, you know, I'll say when I was developing this character, here's the things that I was thinking of. Uh, there's some great art of books that, that do this and I love them. They're my favorite books. Uh, nothing frustrates me more. I know I'm, uh, there's some umbrage happening in this video because I'm really passionate about art of books, but nothing frustrates me more. And I, I try not to complain in my videos, but I'm doing it this time. Give me a break. There's, there's nothing that frustrates me more when you just see the art and it's out of context. You know that it was in the film, but you don't know why they chose this design over another design. I love to see those little quotes that says, oh, for this character, we're thinking that, you know, emotionally they're, they're like this. And so they, I'll, I'll show you a good example. One second. This is the art of up. Excellent art of book. Highly recommend it. And there's a section in here about Mr. Fredrickson. You can see these designs of him. And look what it says right here. This is by uh, Daniel Lopez, who's a designer of, uh, of Carl Fredrickson, or one of the main designers of him. Incidentally, this desk right here was the desk that he drew on when he worked at Blue Sky. I'll tell you later how I ended up with that desk. Okay, it says here, Carl is a box, a heavy brick, because of how close to the ground he has sunk. After the death of his wife, he has shut off the world around him, so he's stuck in his ways, very square, impenetrable, unmovable. There's a heaviness to his soul. It's easy to read that he has been through a lot. That's the kind of stuff you want to read in an art of book. That's the kind of stuff that turns these art of books from just a book full of pretty pictures to something that's an actual textbook on how you make this stuff. And if you want to get a job in animation, or you want to get a job in video games, or in film, these are the books that you're going to want to read, and you're going to want to study, and you're going to want to digest so that you can create art like this and think about your art the way that these artists think about their art. Okay, lastly, I wanna show you my five favorite art of books. I have more than five favorites, but these were five that I picked out that I feel like every artist should have in their library. Something like these five. Okay, let's look at them. Okay, the first book I wanna talk about, this is one of my top five, is The Art of Pixar. This is the, not just The Art of Pixar, but it's the complete color scripts and select art from 20 years, 25 years of animation. This is a thick book. It is chock full of art. I highly recommend this book. Let's look at it. So, um, what this does, it fills my criteria because you go in here, it's full of art, um, but we have a forward here that gets into pretty good detail. And then there's this good section where it just talks about everything that went into color scripts. And then, man, look at all these. Every single film that they did up to, I don't know, the last couple of years, it shows all of their color scripts. If you're um, an artist that needs to learn color and why things are colored certain ways, man, you could do no better than, um, than studying this book full of art, so much art in it. Um, then the last part, so the first part is color scripts. The last part of the section, section of the book, is just um, story art. W the world is what they call it, visual development stuff. And again, there's another good section here where they talk about visual development and what it's used for and, and what goes into it. And then it tells you 
um, all of the, or just shows you all the visual uh, art that went in from Toy Story um, all the way until the most recent films like Wally -E Up, Toy Story 3. And I think this ends at, oh yeah, Cars 2 is some of the last stuff. What's cool is it's 25 years, so you can see the evolution of, um, of concept art. This early stuff was all done traditionally. There was nothing done digitally. And the later stuff was all done digitally. There's rarely do you see something that was done um, with traditional media. Sometimes they use stuff, uh, digital brushes that look like traditional media, like this. But um, anyways, this is good stuff to study and to learn. Oh, I need to design an environment. I need to understand color. Um, you know, how do I do the lighting? How do I do the composition? Look at these, copy this stuff, make it your own. So yeah, The Art of Pixar, excellent book. All right, my next book is a little unconventional. It's The Art of Masters of the Universe. Now, some of you are 80s kids, some of you are 90s kids, some of you are born in the 2000s. It doesn't matter. I know this stuff is kind of old, this uh, He-Man stuff, but this book, this book has so much cool art in it, so much out of the box thinking. Uh, these guys were just, whoever designed this He-Man stuff, they were just, anything went. If it was a cool idea, you, you know what I liked about it? It was unapologetic. If it was a cool idea that they thought a kid would like, they stuck it in there. And I look at this stuff and it teaches me how to think out of the box and tr to to try to think of ideas that uh, I think are a little more in touch with uh, my my what my kid you know what my kid wants the kid inside of me wants and then also and just how to take something that you know can on on one level be kind of serious uh, he man's basically a barbarian uh, and you have Skeletor which is you know this evil demon of a character but yet the colors in it are all super playful it's just this nice mix of like you know really aggressive stuff but just fun like kid play stuff. So let's look at this. All right. First off, the quality of this is done really well. This is tons of paintings by Earl Norum. He's the guy who painted this. He's just a brilliant um, painter who kind of has a Frazetta style. Um, and uh, um, he brought a lot of life to the to the He-Man characters. So this is all the early stuff. This tells you, you know, where it came from, how it was born out of you know, these toy companies wanting to make something that they could like sell with cartoons. And the ironic thing is like, this is definitely <laughs> pure like capitalism, but una unabashed creativity as well, like crashing into each other. It's like 80s capitalism and, um, you know, 80s way out there um, styling. So, yeah, this is all toy stuff, toy design. Then it shows like comic stuff that they did. And then we get into the animated stuff. You got storyboards. You can see how they storyboard it. Granted, some of this stuff is a little outdated, but I think you can apply like these color palettes, these character designs. You can definitely tap into that with um, contemporary stuff that you're trying to do. I don't know. I think this Snake, Snake Mountain design is still like one of the coolest designs ever. I think this still holds up. It's almost timeless. Um, yeah, Snake Mountain, man. Wow. Okay, here's some more Earl Norm paintings. Again, this is meeting all my criteria. It's saying who painted what. It's chock full of art. There isn't a page in here that doesn't have artwork on it. Um, I mean, look at this. This is just so ridiculous. Look at these characters. Um, and then it, it's crediting who did it. Um, it's talking about, you know, what went into these pieces. Um, Here's stuff from the, the He-Man movie. So now you're getting concept art from the, the film. And uh, and you actually have some stuff here drawn by Ralph McQuarrie. Ralph McQuarrie is the guy who designed all the Star Wars stuff. So it's really cool to see him. You know, this is a very Star Wars-y design for Man at Arms. Uh, more Ralph McQuarrie stuff. And then we get into uh, the, the, the reboot of He-Man that was done in the early 2000s. So you got all that. Um, then you have some more modern toy design. This stuff is actually designed by um, a friend of mine who lives here in Utah, Nate Barch. He did some of this stuff too. Really, really great artist. Okay, so yeah, that's the He-Man book. Highly recommend it. Okay, the next book. 
next book I highly recommend is The Art of the Crudes. Um, say what you will about the movie. I actually thought it was a, a really fun movie, uh, but the art book is even better than the film. Um, let's look at this. So The Crudes is from DreamWorks, and right off the bat you get some uh, Chris Sanders art. Uh, he's the guy who art direct or to, who directed the film. He also uh, his art style really influenced the look of it. Chris Sanders is the artist who um, who designed and directed Lilo and Stitch. He was a storyboard artist on Mulan and Aladdin. Um, been with Disney for years and years and years, and and now he's. Um, you know, he's directing films, CG films for DreamWorks and other companies. Um, but the, the thing I love about this book is it has a nice cross-section of character designs, environment designs, color studies, um, visual, the big colorful visual development art, and, um, and some prop stuff too, some prop design stuff. But you get to see here, like, the development of these characters, how they go from, um, you know, early pencil designs to really polished um, drawings. Maybe this might even be, no, that's an illustration, but it looks CG. Uh, anyways, it's, it's chock full of great artwork. This is something you definitely want to study if you want to be a character designer, to look at these Carter Goodrich drawings, to see how these drawings are translated into more 3D shapes right here. Um, here's the character stuff. Now look at all the environment stuff. And this is, again, like the He-Man book, this is some really out-of-the-box thinking when it comes to environment designs and world development. Um, really doing some great stuff. If you want to get a job in animation, you want to do environment design, man, this is the kind of stuff your portfolio needs to have in it. So look at this stuff, study it. Yeah, great section on animals. What else? <laughs> look at that. That whale design, walking whale. I love it. Um, so yeah, that's The Art of Crudes. It's just a good, well-balanced book. Oh, and then I forgot about this in the back. And so a lot of it's art, but then they show like exactly how they develop a scene. Um, from storyboards, to digital layouts, to modeling and, and adding surface textures, animation, all this stuff. So again, this, is, this book is a really good textbook on the craft of animation. Um, and again, lots of input from the artists, what they had to say and what they, you know, what they were thinking about when they were doing things. So overall, it meets my five criteria. Dang good book. This book um, is another animated book, but man, they really knocked it out of the park with this book, not only with the film, but with the art of book. In fact, you can't go wrong with like the last five Disney art of books. Can't say the same for some of the Pixar books. They don't quite meet the criteria, but these Disney books, they nail it every time. And the reason I picked Zootopia is because there's so many great character designs. The um, environment designs are, uh, they're just a great um, resource for designing any sort of city. Um, the camera angles that they used, the details they put into it, definitely, definitely a good book. So let's look at it here. And that's another thing too. Um, when you're designing these things, it's all world building and part of the world that we live in is graphic design. Um, so I love books that document the graphic design that they create as well. Um, so a lot of this is Corey Loftus's work. He, you know, here we have all the, um, you know, don't skip over this stuff. When you get an art of book, don't skip over these things. There's a lot of things you can learn um, in what the creators are saying about this. But all this is development, showing you what the movie was originally going to be and what it actually became. Oh, look at this. It's a beautiful design. Um, this right here, it's teaching you. This is a textbook page on how to craft an image where how objects in an image should move your eye look at all these arrows everything's like pointing you to one direction um, you know where your eye needs to look you know the way the lighting is the way objects are in there um, yeah look at all this environment stuff beautiful stuff and now we have the character designs not only does it show like uh, different 
artist's approaches to the characters, but also not just like, here's a design, but here's this character in action. Here's the kind of poses that they can do. Um, and then this is great. It shows you what the final image, uh, rendered image, modeled and rendered image is. Good stuff. Um, more environment stuff, character stuff. You know, if you want to learn how to draw anthropomorphic animals, you got to get this book. Um, you know, I bought this book not only because I was a fan of the film, but I was going to do um, uh, a, a, a children's book with animals in it. And I wanted to just study, like, how did Corey design animals? How did he take them? And, and you know, what were the... What were the iterations that went from more animalistic to more human and where's that balance right um, just great great stuff in here there's also you know along with with environments and and, and uh, character designs there's sections devoted to uh, again graphic design but also like prop stuff so here's how a TV and an oven looks in their world here's how cars look um, yeah, this is all great stuff. So another really good book. Man, these artists at Disney are top notch. Lots of respect for these guys. Good stuff. Okay, this is a good book. Okay, lastly I wanted to share, so I've done an animated series from the 80s. Um, what was the first book? All the Pixar movies, so animated films, but those were all more like artwork and not specific character designs. So that's why The Art of Pixar is such a good book because it's really about the art of, it's not very much like production work. It's it's the development stuff, the the kind of the soul, the art, art soul of the film. All right, so we had The Art of Pixar, which documents the art soul of the film. We have the He-Man book, which is just nuts with all the character designs in it. Um, we had Zootopia and Crudes, which uh, are really good animated art of books, not just because they show character designs, but they show environment designs and they document like how the film was made. There's a lots of good like textbook stuff in there. Lastly, I think there's some really good feature film books as well. And one of my favorite feature film books is The Art of District 9. This is a solid art of book. And I'll show you why. Let's look at it here. Um, number one, District 9 uh, had a lot of graphic design in it. It's developing like an alien culture, but putting them in our world and having it be real, really realistic. What's cool about it is um, their approach to this alien and how it developed and, and, and grew over the years um, as they were designing this film. Um, all these different iterations from tentacled monsters until what they finally ended up on was more of these bug-like things. And what's, what's neat is you read through what the creators were saying and how, you know, I did this design and, and they, you know, the director didn't like it, but he liked this one element of it and told me to go off in this direction. And that led me to do this design and, until finally it got to um, this bug-like design they were doing. And, and just reading about how they, uh, w you know, what unlocked that for them, how they went from you know, like a cetacean, not a cetacean, like a, a cephalopod uh, tentacle design to more of a insect-like thing. Really cool stuff. You get to see in here actual models that they sculpted um, and then the paint overs that they did to figure out what the aliens look like. Uh, the attention to detail in, in here is just tremendous. There's a good section on the aliens, then alien technology. I mean, this is just some fascinating stuff. Alien language, like how they did their writing. Um, and then you, you even have application of alien language turned into graffiti and how they applied that in it. Um, how the aliens would decorate themselves. Now this stuff's amazing. This is all the technology, the alien technology that they're using. And they're trying to, you know, in the film, they're trying to apply to try to get humans to, to unlock this technology. But look at this like mix between something very, this very alien piece of hardware mixed with something, you know, that we might be a little more used to um, with our human sensibilities. Um, yeah, so great shots and images and concepts of all of these uh, weapons and, and 
Oh, here's the development of the um, the mech suit, one of the best mech designs I think we've ever seen. Uh, how it went from a, you know an actual suit to more of the um, exo like almost like a, a, a robot that you just climb in and drive. Um, so yeah, there's all this stuff. You get back in here, it's more environment stuff. Um, really great artwork. If you're wanting to get into feature film, concept art for that, you can see really what kind of stuff is going on in that world and what's expected of artists who are, um, you know, who are working in that field. Uh, what they, one of their main techniques is to take photos and to paint over the tops of photos. So, really good stuff. And then this last section is all dedicated to concept art, or not concept art, graphic design. And, uh, and then they have a little bit on the collectible stuff that they created for the film. All in all, a really good, really good um, feature film art of book. All right, so that's my art of books, the five art of books I think every artist should own. If not these ones, then something like them, something akin to these. All these books cover my five important qualities of an art of book. I have links below on where you can buy these books on Amazon, direct link to each of them, so check that out. All right, thanks for watching this video. As always, these videos are made possible by svslearn.com. If you're an artist who's wanting to up their game, uh, get better at art or even like take a stab at art you've never drawn before check out svslearn.com for like 15 bucks a month you can subscribe to all of the content on the website it's like the netflix of art classes one subscription gets you access to everything and we're always adding new content on the website so check that out and i will see you guys next week bye